guess we're just going to do our best. My plan when I began filming this documentary six years ago was to make a supportive film about a church minister from West Virginia who helps people commit suicide. I had no idea what I'd find out about George Exo and his world. If you can't trust a priest, who can you trust? <laughs> so we may be the first martyrs. Wait! He's a stupid man, in my opinion. I know it's bitter. Just keep drinking. Put your finger over your nose if you have to, and get it all down. Was I playing with myself while I was doing this? I don't have film you dying, George. It's absolute bullshit. So now, what, do you want me to cry? Should I cry for you? <laughs> He's not just staring into the abyss, he's in serious danger of falling into it. I think it's the reason I'm placed on this planet. This story begins in January 2002. A woman's body has been found in this rented house in Dublin. Her name is Rosemary Tall, and police say she was suffering from depression. Her death does appear to have been a case of assisted suicide. Carthy are now investigating not only how the woman died, but whether or not someone was with her at the time. Any person convicted of helping her to commit suicide could be jailed for up to 14 years. A few weeks later, and the Irish police release a suspect's name. They're seeking the arrest of the Reverend George Exo from Beckley, West Virginia. I've always supported the Right to Die movement, and so I call him and ask if I can film him. He says he was in the room with Rosemary Tall when she died. He says he's happy to come out from his shadowy world and be filmed by me because he wants his work documented before he's arrested and it's too late. I ask him what suicide method he uses and he says, pills and gas. This is George's friend, Susan. She doesn't want her face shown. George offers to demonstrate his method for me. I can't show the technical aspects of it. Now, what we're going to do is turn on the... Don't turn it on. Ah! What? It just popped and hit me in the stomach. What popped? This. Well, I don't know how it did that. It's like it's another way of killing people, just giving them a heart attack. Yeah, you just give them a heart attack. Well, there's nothing this we can do. This happen in the, when you're helping people. This never happened. This, never, this happened. never happened before. Gas is one of George's preferred methods because of its lethality. Death occurs within three to five minutes, although if the suicide is somehow fumbled, they'll probably end up in a permanent vegetative state. Who is George Exo, and what is this world he belongs to? It turns out that the modern assisted suicide movement began in 1975 in Malmesbury, Wiltshire, with a woman called Jean Humphrey, who was suffering from terminal cancer. She asked me to help her to die. And I said, what do you want me to do? She said, go to a doctor and get an overdose of drugs. And uh, at a point in, in March 1975, she did take those drugs in my presence and, uh, and died. I wrote a little book about it, and that kick-started the Right to Die movement. Jean's Way was published in 1978, and to my amazement, caused a sensation. People kept coming to me and saying, how do you do it? Where do you get the drugs? What drugs do you use? Hundreds of people. In the end, a network of dozens of right to die groups formed in the wake of Jean's Way. They were set up to lobby for a change in the law and provide the names of doctors willing to offer lethal doses to terminally ill people. The ambience of what I'm talking is severe terminal and hopeless illness. Derek says that on the edge of the Right to Die movement is a man who's willing to help non-terminally ill people kill themselves. George Exo. Once or twice a week I get very strange people on the telephone and they're anxious to commit suicide because of their depression or, or, or sad life or something. When you get one of these people gets on to you and your number, they want to talk, talk, and they call again, and they call leave messages, and they, they pursue you. And they also call all the other Right to Die groups. And they would say, oh, uh, we can't help you. It's not within our uh, parameters. 
but George Exel will probably help you. And, see, and that gets them off the phone and onto George's lap. Isn't that kind of terrible in a way? Oh, yes. I think it's a kind of under the counter, yeah. I mean, so I will get calls from people who say, well, I asked these people and they wouldn't help me, but they gave me your name. Well, How many people have you assisted? Actually, I now know. I calculated it out. I have done hands-on assisting with 82 people, and another 20 have relied on my help with, uh, at a distance. Hands-on so, assisting? Hands-on assisting. That means I was there. I was present with them when they died. It's only legal in uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Switzerland, and Oregon. The law all over the, the Western world is very tolerant towards assisted suicide of dying people and hopelessly degenerative ill people. And they usually will not prosecute. I mean, in my case, I mean, when the police came to me, I said, yes, I did it. I'm, I'm guilty. I, I, you know, absolutely. But when it comes to mentally ill people, that's where the, the, the uh, police will pounce. Hello, is this Pam? It sounds like her. Listen, I would like to uh, come to visit you tomorrow, if possible, to uh, just do a little spiritual groundwork. Would that be possible? Mm-hmm. Oh, bless your heart. Okay. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. So here's, here are our instructions. And I would say if we're to be there by noon, we want to leave about... 6.30 in the morning. Is that too early? Today, George is driving six hours to visit Pam, who says she's suffering from the non-terminal chronic fatigue syndrome and is considering killing herself. Some of my other colleagues who do this will avoid such persons like the plague. George is paying for the petrol, even though he's broke. He says he doesn't accept payment, only expenses, because it's his calling. He says he feels an affinity with Mother Teresa, who also helped people nobody else would. I think it's the reason I'm placed on this planet, and, and I hope that in uh, 25 or 50 years there will be a lot of George Exos doing this kind of work as a specialised ministry, and a midwife to the dying, but people who want to hasten their death. I think it's the same thing that impelled Mother Teresa to India. Do you have your cell phone with you? Yeah. Let's try dialing this number. It's ringing in the house. I'm at your front door. All right, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. How do you Hi, do? Good I'm George. Hi, George. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. And, and this is uh, David. David, and David. behind him is John. I'm John. I thought this was just to be a pastoral visit. I didn't realise that George was about to eulogise to Pam on the joys of death and what a great adventure it will be. This is a great adventure. Look forward to it. I'm following a church uh -huh. minister who helps non-terminally ill people kill themselves and is wanted by the Irish police. We're at the house of a prospective client, Pam, who's thinking about committing suicide. Come. 